All right, how are you doing? So I'm just going to show you a few things that I've done since my last video. Uh, you may recall how the explosions were looking. Well, I've done a lot of work on the sound and the effects. So here's how my airburst explosions now look. Work in progress and all that. So the bomb guidance is a bit funny. But there we go, the airburst explosions and all that dust kicked up from the ground. It's a bit thick, but actually I quite like that as uh, offering people a chance to move around on the ground without getting sniped. And the second wave, the high altitude bombing. There's the bombers going. Now I had a problem with the contrails, but I've managed to fix that too. Uh, and off they go. So that is the basic bombing system I've got. And I've made lots of tweaks to things. So these are the targets, and I've now changed the way they interact with the bombers. Uh, so let's find where to start, where to start. Let's find the target blueprint. So what I've done is I've made a custom, now if I clear that it's going to need to be reset, a custom collision because actually you want a bit of a cone so uh, planes farther up need more distance to drop their bombs and this cone is defined simplistically by the glide angle of the bombs, the maximum glide angle uh, whether guided or unguided. Uh, it's not quite right because planes have a velocity, they impart a velocity to a bomb so a plane down there can't release the bomb on target because the bomb has a lot of forward momentum has to lose first so it doesn't quite work and I might need to find a solution for lower altitude bombing but for high altitude bombing it works quite well so as soon as a plane strikes that cone it drops the bomb and the bomb should make it to target provided the glide angle or the guidance is good enough um, the material in case you're wondering uh, it's just a fancy thing just so it doesn't block the view um, but still highlights the shape of the cone. Essentially I have a texture which is just a very long black line with a white blob. The white blob is where the ring is and that's set in the alpha and I don't need those bits but they're added just to put more rings in. Uh, I've got a panner to pan the texture and takes the alpha that's panned that's just to combine it with the other ones uh, and that sets the opacity and the colour is just set to red in the emissive um, the material itself is masked uh, could be unlit there we go, that's better um, that'll be more efficient as well and uh, it'll just slightly change the appearance um, yeah, as a slight digression uh, I've changed a lot of things. I've also put a new kind of object in, which is this, which uh, I've changed my mind about what to call it. It's a dispatcher really, uh, as was known in the old Unreal Tournament. And uh, it's a new blueprint done from scratch. Basically you can trigger things with no constraint randomly, not to repeat the last one, to minimise repeats in general, or to go in a sequence from first to last. It can be one shot or it can be looping and you can define your triggered items uh, any number of actors to trigger you specify the function that's called I might standardize that to something like trigger on um, how long it's going to take to finish which you can ignore or not and the relative priority I haven't done that yet uh, the relative priority should allow you to wait some things more than others but as in to wait W E I G H T. Um, not sure I can be bothered to make that work now, so I might just take that out. And uh, yeah, and you can have triggers trigger other triggers. But this is the one I have on and using, which first of all triggers. Uh, can't see it, but which is something of a shame. Um, 
is that sets off the high level bombers and the second thing it does is to trigger the low level bomber which so it should do um, just as a test uh, but I think what I might do is to change this so that the low level bombers don't start automatically but are triggered by this so uh, I'm going to delete this and create a new for, I guess very confusing alright so I am going to use my low level bomber number one make another entry low level bomber number two and I'm going to say that they are going to take 15 seconds to run but actually I don't want to uh, wait too long to trigger the high level ones because they take a little while to come on target so I'm going to turn off finish the event for triggering next which will just trigger them after this random delay so there's a random initial delay and a random delay between events so that should suffice but I'm going to turn it down to that so when the game when the level's finished this will be a longer delay you'll get random bombing not so often as a bit of a surprise but you'll get a forewarning as you see the contrails um, trigger only once yes run at begin play yes so let's see what happens that should send me two bombers when I play so here is the trigger system in more detail this is the main loop as it begins so there's a concept of the current event which is worked out at the beginning and the event is read from the array and it has various properties which are defined in this structure so every element of the trigger group has these properties which are used to do the triggering and I've also made an enumeration to make a more user-friendly list of behaviors for the trigger and then for each uh, each actor in the event um, the relevant function is called now I've hacked this because there is one way it seems to call a particular function of a particular object and that is to set the timer by function name so I've got a time of 0 0.01 um, so that should hopefully always trigger the relevant thing bit of a hack that's how I've done it uh, I don't know how well it will fail if the function name is wrong so that could cause a problem uh, if you are waiting for it to finish it will do a delay if not it'll carry on now I have a concept of an event history where it's a buffer of a certain size, a history size and as one thing is added other things are taken away and this history uh, is used especially for the um, either the one-shot modes where it's got to remember what it's done so it cannot do it again and also for the minimize repeats basically it has a buffer size half the size of the number of events and it basically works by not repeating anything which has happened in the last half sequence size um, so events won't be repeated until at least half the sequence has been carried out so it should give a more sort of human randomish feel to it rather than computer randomish which often gives things like events might repeat straight away and whatever so this gives a very sort of natural feel of, of triggering random things and then at the end of triggering the event it works out the next one after the delay you set and um, just a bit of logic it took a while to work this out um, if trigger only once and all the things have been triggered then stop uh, otherwise select the next event and set that as a current event before looping and if the event number is minus one that is this functions way of telling us that we've got to stop uh, and select next event is ugly so basically if we trigger only once do this set of logic if we trigger 
repeatedly do this set of logic. This is the more interesting list set of things rather. Um, so depending on your triggering type it does different things. So no constraint means simply select a random thing range 0 to the size of the event's buffer minus 1. Uh, don't repeat the last event. It will uh, select something that's not the current event. That's a separate function, not too hard. Uh, to minimize repeats it selects something that's not in the history list. So to exclude the event history. And this is possibly not efficient, but this is the most interesting bit of logic. Um, first of all, work out that we're not going to do something stupid. Then basically it generates a list, an array full of all of the possible numbers. So if it's 0 to 5, the array will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it goes through and removes things in this array. So for each entry in the array of excluded things, find the relevant number in our list of all numbers and remove it. This remove index, so find, is the thing that finds the index corresponding to that number. Because as you delete things, number 5 is no longer in slot 5, it's in slot 4, for example. So anyway, that's a little tweak to make it work. And at the end, you see is the length big enough, and you choose a random index, uh, and then you get the number from that index. Anyway, that kind of works. It took a little while to get that working. And that's basically the triggers. And so on. So that's it with the audio. Just to digress on these sounds a bit, there's um, I've put in some features into this. So the incoming mortar sound, which is used for the whooshes, um, here is the wave. Let's see if it works. Don't know if you can hear that. Um, that plays the waves. Uh, this modulator I put here, which basically randomizes the pitch and the volume slightly. I use this for things where there's lots of repeating sounds. So rather than whoosh, 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 it'd be sort of whoosh, 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 whoosh. So it makes it sound more natural and random. And I've also done that for the, uh, if I haven't, I will do it for the basic um, explosion sound. And I've also done it. So that's an old one. Uh, all right, I think I meant to put a modulator. Let's do that. So this is my basic jet sound, and I have both a modulator now, because if the jets are coming at the same time, you want the jet engines to be a slightly different frequency so they don't have phase effects going on. The Doppler is a Doppler effect, makes it sound tactical. Um, I could instead continuous modulator. If I decide to change the uh, speed of the jet engines, jet engines, this is the way to do it. Um, you can modulate the pitch and the volume as the sound plays as a looped sound. So if the engine speed goes up, the pitch goes up a bit, and you can use these to to tweak that, but I don't do that at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it as is. The Doppler is the dominant effect. So, um, and the attenuation settings do things. I can't remember what's done there, but um, I've got a very large fall off for the jet engines because I want you to be able to hear them when they're at altitude. I think that's all I was going to say on that. Um, and uh, with that, I've a bit of sound design rather than necessarily doing clever things with blueprints. So we have the bomb explosion sound which I may change and may tweak and then I've got a sort of longer um, sort of boomy bomb sound because you never got a bomb going off and then just silence. 
uh, well often you get more of a wee sound but I think the preference is not to simulate that because it's just annoying and painful when that happens uh, so the sounds bombing so this is my boomy sound I don't know if you can hear that that's rather quiet um, and this is the whoosh I can't hear that, I wonder why anyway so um, I put the sounds in, I played with the attenuation so the boom attenuation the boomy sound uh, is not spatialized so it's just a general everything around you, all, all around you boominess um, and uh, the bomb has a different attenuation so it travels quite far um, but gets a low pass filter and so on, I mean there's I could talk about sound for a while. Concurrencies to the main use of this was that the boomy sound uh, does not have many iterations because it, I mean ideally it'd have one. Uh, I made it two concurrently so that it doesn't miss new bombs arriving so easily. It's not foolproof. I need to perhaps do a custom concurrency system for that. Anyway uh yeah the targets have changed i've done quite a lot of work on the guidance for the bombs uh which it's all messy but i've abstracted it abstracted it into this function or macro uh there's bits i'm not using i'll take them out but I think this is pretty much it. Uh, I could go into it, it's a bit confusing. Um, basically, in a nutshell, I work out where the bomb is, where the target is. I get the vector, which is the direction, and I get a unit vector. So that basically points towards where I want to be. This is from the velocity as it is, which points, which is where we're pointing right now. I work out the difference in direction I want to have in the X and Y and I scale it depending on how fast we're dropping downwards because the faster a bomb's going down the more the fins will work and so is the theory I constrain the amount of left and I constrain the amount of horizontal movement um, just so we don't get silly crazy velocities and then I add in a gravity component and I scale with the tick the delta from the tick quite important that. And so our final velocity adjustment is a contribution for the gravity acceleration and the horizontal adjustment I want to make. Uh, and if it's unguided that bit doesn't happen, you just get the gravity. So that is my desired adjustment. We add it to the current velocity. I've got a further constraint to make sure it's not going sideways, which would be mostly silly. Actually that is needed because it starts off sideways, so maybe yeah, I have taken that out anyway. Uh, maybe I need to put that back in because uh, I'm getting some silly results. Anyway, I'll leave that for now. Uh, and that's it. In fact, I will put that back. Let's see if that makes a difference. Um, and that's my guidance. I've had a few goes to get to there, but it does seem to work generally okay. And uh, this is my function for constraining it. So basically, if direction is extends beyond the sort of unit circle it will bring it back into the unit circle that's harder to explain than to just show and I won't bother showing um, now when we blow a bomb up a few things happen I've got some debug stuff to tell me how near it is to the target um, okay ignore that what's it do it uh, makes the explosion so that is our explosion particle system. It scales it up. Uh, it's basically, it was a grenade system. I've scaled it up. You could do that in the particle system itself, but that's a bit tedious. Um, it plays the sound with a delay. I can't remember if I've done this before, but this now uh, there's probably a yeah. Um, I've made a macro for that, but basically it works out how far away the thing is, divide by speed of sound. Um, and 
scaled up because a unit in Unreal is a centimeter, not a meter. Um, and it uh, then plays the sound after that delay. So a bomb that explodes in the distance, the boom will come to you later. I play that boomy sound and then I've got a new thing to generate the ground dust and then I destroy the bomb. Uh, so I've got a few particle systems, I haven't really shown these before. I don't know much about particle systems. Um, this one is the basic bomb. I don't know what's not, there we go. Most of it's smoke, as you can't see. I've got a particle system for the contrails coming out of the planes. Which, uh, well, I think it's at a funny angle. But that's yeah, normally stretched out as the, as the plane travels, so it looks different to that. Uh, the main thing is this curve here is the alpha of the contrail over time. And bear in mind these are stacked up against each other. The overall alpha is a bit different. Uh, the colour is fairly constant over the lifetime. I mean, this stuff is quite hard to decipher at first, but it's basically just defining a curve and you can actually just manipulate the curve there more easily. Um, the size is big, but gets bigger. So where is the size of life? Uh, size by life, life multiplier. So basically, I think I've set it up wrong, but uh, yeah, the contrails get bigger as time goes on and velocities, whatever. So uh, I haven't really got into park systems. I don't tend to go into them right now. Uh, I can't see the other one. There's another particle system for the dust. Um, if you're interested, I could go over those, but I don't know much about them. I have changed the bomb track quite a lot. Uh, one thing I've done is so that if you put down a spline, rather than having to work out the rolls for the plane manually, let's go to top, uh, get a bomb track. Yeah, 